Hi everybody, so this is hopefully a quick video uh, on the new release uh, today, release 19b, which has some new functionality primarily driven by feedback from the community. We've made a few changes and updates and a few bug fixes as well. So the first thing to do after um, checking that you've done an update is just to see that you have PF2 release 19b. Uh, so that's going to just show you that you got the latest, the, the update that came out today, um, September the 5th. And I'm going to run through the main areas of changes or new functionality in this release. There's the ability to um, close and open the GM desktop panel. There's the ability to, um, in a limited way, use the activities for NPCs. And we've redefined and expanded the um, the shield and shield block and repair functionality. I'll be doing a separate video in full details of the uh, the new shield block uh, functionality, but I'll briefly show it in this video. Um, but the first things I want to show is just basically the uh, the DC panel. Um, based off some feedback, you know, previously you could minimize it and you know reopen it that way but now you've got the full ability to close this when it's closed it disappears completely and there's this new gm dc panel button in the tools section up there that will open it panels work differently than windows so whereas windows you can you know, click to open click to close you can't click to close via the gm dc panel sidebar you have to close it that way um, but hopefully, you know, this will be quite a good change. You know, people can still move things around. They can, you know, reset the position. They can minimize if they want to, and they can close and reopen it if they want to. The second thing is um, allowing limited activity use for NPCs. This is really the first iteration of this and testing to see how it works. And I'll certainly expand the functionality and hopefully make it easier to use in future. But this at least allows um, a GM to use some of the activities. So if we just think, um, open the combat tracker. Uh, we have a giant ant is currently um, active in there. And if I... Um, you know, bring this open and say maybe the giant ant wants to try and shove uh, somebody. So that's going to, yeah, its check is going to be athletics against the, the target's fortitude. The way this is going to work is when I roll that from this activity that is unattached, it's not attached to any record. You know, normally the activities in the PC sheets, they're attached to the record. This is the base record itself. You can actually see it's the Pathfinder second edition core rules. It's set to read only because it's the base uh, actual record, but you can still use this. So the giant ant, what it's going to do is when I actually roll this, it's going to look in the combat tracker and it's going to say, right, which creature is the currently active creature so it's going to make this um, role it's going to use the current creatures athletics and it's going to look at the targeting for that creature so you need to have targeting set and it relies on this activity so that it knows who's doing it and what who they're doing it against so i'll just roll this and then just see what actually happens from that so that's a four, uh, you know, plus eight, that's a 12, that's a success. I think Tester has a zero fortitude, that's probably why. Um, yeah, Tester has a zero fortitude, so that is a success. 12 against a 10 is a success. Uh, and basically, you know, it just tells you what you can actually do with that. If I'd rolled a critical failure, you know, I could apply the prone effect to myself as an example there. You can see it's applied the prone effect. Um, so that would just actually go ahead and do that. And it just allows you to um, use that um, quite quickly. Um, it's not, you know, super quick to use. I suppose I've just said it's quickly and now I'm saying super quick. Um, it's not super quick. You've got to come into activities. You've got to find it and you've got to bring it up and things like that. If perhaps, you know, this was a creature that um, regularly, um, you know, did some activities, maybe it did some shoving, and if it did some tumble throughs as well, you could link to those activities and, you know, just bring them up from there. Uh, and again, these aren't specifically linked to um, the creature, they're just links to bring up the main um, sidebar records, basically, within those links there. 
so that's really just a quick example of how you could use these there's some things that won't work correctly so if things rely on a proficiency level um you can't get that you know if we need to check on the proficiency level of athletics here um we don't know what the proficiency level is all we know is is, is it's plus eight we can take a guess maybe it's you know it's a level two creature with a strength of plus four it's probably trained but you know that's just really us making a guess on that um so we can't really you know work those out so if there's activities that use proficiencies and things like that they're not going to be able to work correctly um but a lot of the base activities will and sorry i'll just go back to this you know athletics check here it d 20 plus 8 it did bring you know use the athletics bonus from this actual npc when we um did that uh, shove check so that's just a quick way of how a GM could use certain activities um, for NPCs and so the final thing is we've reworked the um, the shield um, functionality basically we've just made it so that you don't need to put the the hardness of the shield in the shield the shield block activity previously you would have had you know shield block colon 10 for a uh, you know shield with a hardness of uh, 10 but now we just say shield block and what the system is going to do is it's going to look at it's going to find the an unbroken equipped shield um, so if you have a look at our inventory we actually have a couple of shields in here I've been using for testing the minus sturdy shield is currently carried so we'll just equip that and I'll just check how much damage it's taken yeah it's it's undamaged so yeah I'll just equip a equip that and that will be used when I use a shield block activity so as an example say this um, say this giant ant was going to attack me I'll just get rid of its prone effect so the giant ants going to attack me and I decide to use my shield block uh, reaction I can just click that effect it puts shield block on me and it's only valid for one roll it's going to disappear after one roll when the creature does its attack against me four eight damage the shield block goes away and it's completely absorbed to that the shield has a hardness of eight um, so that's completely uh, actually absorbed that that damage you can see here it's got shield hardness of eight so it's just gone and found that uh, shield hardness um, I'll just actually increase the damage a little bit so you can see what happens when um, so it attacks us again you know another round 12 damage four gets through and it does four damage to that shield so it all just you know automates that and does all of that damage um, and the absorbing of the damage up to the hardness uh, we've also added in a repair shield functionality um, depending on whether you repair other people's shields or your own um, you may want to just change this target uh, who it's whether, whether you're target somebody or whether you're going to do against yourself but maybe you know after the combat this guy wants to um, repair his shield he rolls a success and I'll just click that and it's automatically going to go to the success level um, I'm actually a master um, in this um, in crafting so it's using that so, sorry expert sorry uh, in crafting so for uh, this activity it does five plus um, five point per proficiency rank you have in crafting so a uh, total of 10 if you're trained total of 15 if you're expert and this is a new um, piece of functionality proficiency rank you can use that in there um, so we don't need to have multiple entries we just have one that's going to take your proficiency in crafting and and use that in there so that's quite a quick way of you know actually um, repairing shields um, if you're repairing somebody else's shield you can just target them or drag that onto to them and then just do um, repairing testers undestroyed shields so it's repairing testers shield as well so you can repair other people's shields so hopefully that's quite a quick way of people actually being able to repair shields and finally uh, we've added in functionality that um, allows shield warden and that allows you to block other to protect your allies and we have a new um, effect here called shield block ally and the way this work it's going to use um, effect targeting so if I um, actually just put this on again we'll use tester um, 
sorry that's not going to work I can't drag and drop that we need to actually use proper targeting for this so I target tester and put that on there and it's shield block ally notice it's shield block ally on the creature that's going to take the damage but there's we use effect targeting um, to determine who's actually using that shield who's supplying that shield so um, when the giant ant attacks and does sorry does damage we see the shield block ally effect and then the system is going to say okay who actually owns that shield block ally effect and will use their shield to actually do that so the giant ant does damage that's 12 you see shield block ally dash jadron tagar that's telling you whose shield is being used partially absorbed and it does four damage to that shield so you can see now quite quickly how you can actually use that shield block uh, ally functionality as well but you need to make sure that the targeting the effect targeting is correct and it um refers back to the person who's using the shield so like I mentioned earlier there's a few other little updates um, there's also some bug fixes which are all detailed um, in the release 19 thread in the fantasy grounds forums I'll provide a link below to that that particular post so you can go and see everything that's actually been done in this release and if you have any questions or any issues please either you know ask below or in the, the thread on the fantasy grounds forum thanks for watching